Okay. Okay, let's see if this works. <laughs> I forgot to put it on Wi-Fi before I got on. Should be working now. How's everybody doing tonight? In this oh so crazy world we live in. I uh, just got back from Walmart, had to go there really quick because my grandson's mom asked me to go and see if they had any diapers or any wipes because she had gone to her town to try to find them and there was nothing, like nothing in my youngest grandson's size. So I went to Walmart and, um, and I knew that there was like a shortage on toilet paper and things like that. I had no idea there was a shortage on diapers. And so anyways, I went there and when I saw the aisle, I actually started to cry. Not like bawling my face off or anything, but I got like a little bit choked up. I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. So like in my grandson's size, there was only um, two or three boxes, like period, in his size. And so anyways, I got him a box and got him a couple of things of wipes. Um, but uh, yeah, it was, uh, I mean, I, I started to choke up because I... I mean, you start realizing kind of like the situation we're actually in. But the other reason I started to choke up is because I remember what that was like being a single mom. And I kind of like quickly like went back through my mind picturing like what if this had happened when I was a young single mom? I would have thought like, you know, first of all, I wouldn't have had the money to like stock up like a lot of people are doing. Or what if I didn't get paid until today and then I went and there was no diapers or something. So, um, yeah, like my heart went out to single moms tonight when I, yeah, when I just went to Walmart. That was, uh, that was kind of crazy. So, oh, you're sweet, Jessica. <laughs> so, like, right before I got on here, <laughs> I looked a little bit different. <laughs> So I like quickly like got home and like my grandsons are actually in the in the dining room right now with my daughter and um, I rush back in my room and change my shirt really fast and put on earrings and put on lip gloss and brush my hair really fast. So I did a really quick little, uh, I freshened up. <laughs> hey Kelly, I see you. Hi Larry. And anybody else who's watching? It doesn't always show me everyone who's watching. Like I can see how many people are watching. I can sometimes see your profile picture. I definitely can tell that you're watching if you comment. So please comment. And just know that when you do comment or you do a heart or you um, share it, it actually um, makes it to where more people can actually see it. So it becomes like free advertising. So anytime I say something that is like, ooh, that's good, share it. Or ooh, that's good, do like a heart or comment because it actually helps the reach when you do that. So anyways, well, thanks for jumping on. I uh, We've recently had quite a few people uh, like our page. So we have like, I think just recently we got like maybe 20 more that, that liked our page. So there's probably a lot of people who are coming on here and won't actually know like who I am or what Purely His is. So I'm just gonna give a really quick um, kind of backstory just in case this is your first time seeing me live. So my name's Michelle and I run Purely His. And basically Purely His is a ministry that was like birthed out of my own like story, my own background, and not just like the bad stuff in my background, but basically how I healed. And then um, I took that healing that I've gotten and have paid it forward. And so I used to be a drug addict, used to be an alcoholic, a sex addict, a single mom, um, you know, had some abortions, had a couple of divorces. Um, really just had a life that was full of shame and heartache and um, disappointment and hopelessness. And when I finally like gave my life to Jesus, like really went all in with Jesus, he totally radically changed my life. And of course I had to do a lot of things with him as a team to, to change my life. And so as I was doing those things that God was telling me to do, I started to write down the ways that I was healing and and out of all of that purely his was birthed so um, God actually gave me the vision when I was in rehab I was only two weeks clean and sober when I got the vision for this ministry 
and that was 13 and a half years ago. So, so here we are now, started this ministry, and I wrote several books that are actually used in a group study where people like get these books, they go through them together as a group, and they meet once a week for five months. And throughout that time, they're going through some of the exact same things I did to get the healing that I got. And so um, those groups are happening kind of all over the place now. And we're getting ready to start an online mentoring group where, all, where I will be personally mentoring those that are in the group. And there may be 10 people on there, or there may be 200 or 1,000. We don't know what it's gonna look like, but that's something I'm getting ready to launch. I'm also doing one-on-one -on -one mentoring, which I've been doing for a long time. Um, but that is something that I'm really getting more into. And then the other thing I do is speaking engagement. So I'll go around, share my story at rehabs, prisons, you know, whatever, churches, small groups. I don't really care. I just really don't want anything that I've gone through to go to waste. So that's just a very quick snapshot of, of who I am and what, um, what Purely His is. Obviously, my life is very different than my past, and that's why I'm able to share the way that I do because I share from a place of victory. I share from a place of healing and not just like, oh, uh, you know, my life was such a piece of crap. You know, I don't share from that place. I share from a place of, but look what God can do. And so anyways, I do these Friday night lives every Friday at 5.30. Um, I try to do lives other times throughout the week um, when I have time or I'm inspired. But anyways, um, jumping into what I wanted to talk about tonight. Oh, and I see you, Melissa. Yay. Yeah, most people, just so you know, most people catch the replay. Hardly anyone gets to see it live because I think a lot of people like don't get off until six o'clock or whatever. But at seven, eight o'clock when it's like good for everyone else, like I'm done with my day. So I would do much better if y'all would get up with me at like 6 a.m. and we could do it then, but it's not really other people's cup of tea. So um, you said mode center. Are you talking about the Moda Center? Like where I'm gonna speak someday? Uh, yes, I actually had a vision of myself speaking on that stage the night that I said yes to God about this vision. So when I finally was like, okay, I'll do it, which was seven years ago, it was actually in the Moda Center, which was called the Rose Garden at, the same, at that time, which I'm pretty sure that's what you're talking about. But anyways, um, since the S is right by the A, right? <laughs> anyways, um, yep, <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> Uh, so, okay, so so the coronavirus and all this stuff that's going on, um, I really wanted to speak into this tonight, especially those of us who are Christians. Um, God really gave me a revelation over the last few days, and yesterday he totally gave me a word, and I just want to like speak that word out tonight. It's encouragement. Um, so if everyone's like, oh no, the coronavirus, I don't want to hear this again. This is bad news. No, I really think this is great news. For us as Christians. So what the word that he gave me yesterday was, you know, because I was, you know, I was fretting a little bit too. I was a little nervous too, keeping it real. Like, you know, I'm, I'm checking Facebook. I'm looking at the news. I'm wondering when is my daughter's school going to close down? Is my grandson's daycare going to close down? What are we going to do with this? What are we going to do with that? What about poor people? What about single moms? You know, so I'm thinking about that stuff. Um, I'm not like fearing death or thinking my whole family is going to die. I'm not like going that far, but I do have some concerns, especially about the unknown. So, you know, we're all human, even if we're Christians, doesn't mean we're like always living in faith and never freaked out by anything. That is um, not accurate. So yes, I was a tiny bit freaked out and I was talking to the Lord about it and he just so calmly said this to me, this is what we've been training for. And I was like, it is. And I started like switching my mindset about it. And I knew that that word was not just for me, but it was for all of you. It was for every Christian. It's for anyone who's ever gone through a purely his group or anyone who professes to be a Christian. Like this is what we've been training for. You know, the harvest is right, but the workers are few. We are the workers. And so we can look at this and just be like, oh man, 
Now is the time. Now is the time that our families are going to repent. Now is the time that people who were like, yeah, I don't really think there is a God. Those are the people who are going to start going, um, I wonder if there is a God. You know, this type of situation, this pandemic can actually push people towards the Lord. This is when people start wanting to go to church. This is when people start seeking out their friends who are Christians for comfort, for prayer, for advice, for, you know, questions like, um, is this in the Bible? You know, things like that. I've been hearing those types of questions that are being asked of, of people that I know. And so there is just an incredible opportunity. And instead of us just looking at this and getting super duper freaked out, we can look at this. I mean, we get a little freaked out, but then stop and go, wait a minute. How could God use this? I mean, this is what we've been training for. We're the ones who profess to be all in with Jesus. We're the ones who profess that we've been unstuck. We're the ones who profess freedom in Christ. Like, how could we be a light in this dark time right now? What could we post on Facebook that is going to counteract the fear? What can we post on Facebook that is going to show people that there is an answer and the answer is Jesus? Like, what can we do to help others. Like I just started seeing something going around on Facebook tonight, which I'm so happy about. And people were like copying and pasting it. But it was like basically like, hey, if you don't have any milk or you don't have any groceries or you don't have whatever, please let me know. I would like to be a help to you. And I was like, that's what I'm talking about. That right there. Because, you know, like I was saying at the very beginning, man, I'm getting all like hot. This is the Lord is like, so ah, thank you, Jesus. Anyways, um, when I just went to Walmart, for those of you who weren't on at the beginning, I went there because my um, grandson's mom was saying that uh, that Walmart's all out of diapers. So I went to the Walmart here, and when I walked on the aisle, there was literally like two or three packages of diapers in his size. I was like, what? And I started to cry because I started thinking about what it was like as a single mom. There's no way I could have gone. I couldn't even buy big boxes of diapers like that. I would have had to buy one at a time because I didn't have the money. I couldn't fill up my gas tank. I would have had to put five bucks in it. You know, there was so many things that I couldn't do as a single mom, and we really need to be thinking about that as Christians right now. So we're stockpiling, we're making sure that we're okay, but we need to make sure our neighbors are okay. This is where we get to shine as Christians. This is where we not only get to show them like, hey, I got peace. Yeah, I might be a little freaked out, but for the most part, I got peace. Oh, and by the way, I have extra eggs. I have extra milk. I got some extra diapers. Oh, you know, this or that. I mean, this is our opportunity to really be able to love people in action and love them right into heaven, love them right into a relationship with Jesus. And I started thinking about like, okay, yeah, we're not supposed to have these huge gatherings of 250 people or more, but can we have a, a gathering of six people in our house? Can we meet in the park, like 10 of us and like just pray or offer encouragement to others? Can we take a bag of food to a single mom or to someone who is elderly, someone that we know probably doesn't have that much money and could we bless them with that? And could we ask them like, hey, can I pray over you? I know it's like scary times right now. You know, just things like that, like this is, this is our opportunity and this is what we have been training for. So now this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where we, um, you know, have to actually act it out in action. This is where we have to actually walk out what we have been professing, we believe, especially those of us on Facebook. I mean, we're just like blasting stuff all about Jesus all the time. And then all of a sudden something like this hits and we're like, <gasps> and the posts start changing. We cannot change right now, okay? We need to stay steady. We need to stay at peace. We need to stay in hope. We need to stay in faith. We need to do whatever we can to just keep putting Jesus out there and, and keep putting ourselves out there so that we can eventually lead people to Christ. And so um, the scripture came to me um, as I was thinking about all this stuff. I was like, okay, we can't have big gatherings, but we can have small gatherings. How can we do this? We can do this either in our homes, in parks, or we can go online and do it. Like we video chat people all the time. We can use Zoom. We can use Facebook, you know, Messenger, you know, even for those of you who are leading purely his groups, do a Zoom call with your group, do it face, you know, face to face like this, but an actual like video chat. Like there are still ways that we can meet together and encourage one another um, without actually meeting at church on Sunday morning, you know, if if your church is closed, which I know a lot of them are. Anyways, okay, so this is the book of Acts, 
And um, this is Acts 2, 42 through 47. And um, it's talking about the fellowship of believers. It says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to breaking bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. Selling their possessions and their goods, they gave to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and they ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. And, you know, some keys that are in here is, and there's massive amounts in here, but, you know, they devoted themselves to the teaching. So even if you can't go to church, you can get on YouTube. I watch sermons on YouTube every single day, sometimes more than one, sometimes two or three sermons a day on YouTube. So those are always available. So just devoting yourselves to teaching and to fellowship, you know, which can be done over the phone. It can be video chat. It doesn't always have to be in person. And, and getting together and eating and praying together, um, you know, and in times like this, a lot of times like, like signs and wonders can happen. Miraculous things can happen in these times. So, um, which is amazing. Anyways, uh, the part that really stuck out to me though, was selling their possessions and goods they gave to anyone who had need. So I know that a lot of us have some extra stuff right now. And I'm not saying that we're at that point where it's like, oh no, everyone's starving now. Oh no, no one has toilet paper. Oh no, no one has diapers. We're not there yet, but we might get there in a couple of weeks. And so I want you to be generous with the things you have. Use wisdom, take care of your family, but be generous because, you know, a package of diapers or, you know, a package of toilet paper or a home cooked meal or something like that for somebody who's struggling and is really, really afraid and doesn't have the same hope that we have. That can be the thing that melts their heart and you might be able to lead them to the Lord in that moment. And so think about the opportunity that we have right now and don't, you know, don't go to that place <clears throat> where you're thinking like, oh my God, what are we going to do? Like, we're all shocked. Like, this is taking us all by surprise. Like, ah, you know, and that whole thing. I want you to say these words to yourself. You know, this is what we've been trained for. This is what we've been trained for. It also goes along with the scripture that we have been given everything that pertains to life and godliness. Like we are literally lacking nothing. We have been given everything that pertains to life and godliness. So know that and own that and walk that out. We are literally lacking nothing. And the God that we serve is not surprised by any of this stuff. He already knew all this was gonna happen. He knows how it's gonna play out. And he wants us to come together, even if we can't come together in person, he wants us to come together and he wants us to start really seeking him and really starting to ask him, Lord, how could I bless somebody right now? Like, what could I do to bless another person? Because that is extremely important that we are the hands and feet of Jesus right now. Like he is counting on us to remember who we are, remember who he is, and remember that we are straight up on mission here. Like this is our job. It is our job. We are on mission and our mission is not just take care of me and mine. Our mission is to serve Jesus Christ and say, Lord, how can we help others? How can we bless others right now? And so one of the ways that I want to bless others is I want to keep getting on here and, and preaching the word of God and, and praying for people and encouraging people and showing them like how I'm getting through things so that we can do this together because we need to spur each other on towards good work. So that's one of the things that I'm doing, you know, and if I do see a need, a real need of somebody, then I want to try to meet it. If it's like a practical thing, I want to meet it. So yes, I want to meet, you know, help to meet people's like spiritual and emotional needs, but I also want to meet practical needs if possible. Like, so I have like six cartons of eggs in my fridge right now. And the other day, you know, before we heard all the schools were closing down and stuff, I was thinking, I need to start selling those. Man, I could sell them like four or five bucks a piece. And then this morning when I like looked in there, I was like, I probably should save those because there's probably going to be a few people that are going to need them. And so 
it's, I know that that's like a small thing, but it's, it's one way that I can contribute. And I just took my son over some, um, some dirt and some like planter things. Um, and, and was just telling him, Hey, you know, start, start growing some stuff, you know, just like, you know, start doing some things to get yourself ready just in case this lasts longer than we think it's going to last, you know, things like that. So there's small little things, but I really want to encourage you to ask the Lord, like, Lord, I know that I need to have wisdom to take care of myself and my own family, but is there anybody else that I need to help take care of? Is there anything that I have in my house that maybe somebody will need or needs right now? Um, and I would say that the majority of what people need right now is encouragement. They need the word of God. They need, um, you know, maybe a, a YouTube like Christian song like sent to them through messenger. They might need like a, a clip of a sermon sent to them through messenger. Um, they might just need you to give a call and just be like, hey, how are you doing? You know, you doing all right? You know, are you how are you handling this whole, you know, virus scare? Because sometimes somebody just needs to talk. They might just need to cry a little bit. They might need a little bit of prayer, you know, something like that. So I would say that at this point, it's um, it's trying to take care of people's like emotional and spiritual needs. And, and eventually we might be needing to take care of some practical needs. So just start thinking about that. Start thinking about, you know, do you have an extra room? Do you have, you know, a place where someone could set up a tent? Do you have, you know, extra medicine? Do you have extra food or or whatever? Um, and, you know, part of that, that statement that I made at the beginning, like God really took that and he really started to change my heart. And Shannon's talking about it right now, but that this is what we've been training for. Because what it did for me is instead of like, oh my gosh, what in the world is happening? I've never seen anything like this. You know, you know instead of like looking at it like that, it was like the Lord said that to me, and then it was like, you're right, Lord, we need to suit up. Like, I just started thinking of like myself like a warrior. I was like, I am here on mission by Almighty God. I am just passing through this place. I have a calling on my life, and I need to do whatever I need to do to make sure that I am finishing strong. I want to run this race the best that I possibly can, and and help others do the same. And so I'm coming on here tonight for all of you who have been going to church, all of you who have been reading the Bible, all of you who have been saved for a while, like literally this is what we have been trained for. So don't shrink back now. Don't get all freaked out now. Don't get all up in your feelings now. Go back to the word of God. What does he say about you? What does he say about himself? And what does he say about how we're supposed to take care of others? The, the father, list, the widows, the orphans, the, you know, the poor, how are we supposed to take care of them? And so don't just run around doing stuff because you want to feel good about yourself. I don't mean that, but meet real needs and get creative just because things are canceling. That doesn't mean we don't go to church just because things are canceling. Doesn't mean that we don't meet together anymore. Get creative, get on YouTube and watch church, get on, you know, Facebook and do video chats, do something to stay connected, do something to stay encouraged, to encourage each others and be encouraged by others like let's get creative let's not let this stop us and let's get fired up like this can be an amazing opportunity or we could just freak out and crawl into a hole and never leave our house and just you know why god why is this happening i mean really what kind of a life is that i i'm not gonna do that so um i'm gonna try to get creative and i am really praising God. I was actually talking to Shannon about this yesterday and the day before. Like, isn't this crazy that all of a sudden, like God was already shifting our ministry to be like mostly online. Wow. He totally knew this was coming. So I'm like thankful that he prepared me like this. So um, anyways, it's just, we really are living in exciting, in exciting times. Like we are in end times right now. And other people might think of that as like a bad thing, but to me, I'm like, man, God chose me to be in this time. And it's an exciting time because I believe the harvest is so ripe. It is that people are just waiting 
And this is the perfect opportunity, even though it's like a horrible situation, it really is the perfect opportunity. And so put yourself out there and start reaching out to people who you think might need some encouragement. I'm not saying just call them straight up and be like, do you know Jesus? You know, I want to lead you to the Lord right now. I mean, don't be weird, be effective. Um, but think about people who might have needs right now and go meet those needs, even if it's just a phone call and a note, a letter, a card, anything, um, you know, just let's start meeting some needs and let's start praying for that harvest and for the guts to ask people like, hey, I know you're freaked out. I, I know you need some help. How about you consider giving your life to the Lord, like giving your life back to the Lord, you know, whatever it is, but do it in a way that is going to be effective. So pray for wisdom in that. But um, yeah, in the meantime, I just really want you to view this situation we're in in a different way view it through christ's eyes what does he want us to do right now versus how are we going to react to this whole thing it's like okay lord it's happening how can we proceed and so you can even ask him which is something i've been doing every day for like a week and a half two weeks or something i've been saying okay lord I feel like I have all these things I need to do, but Lord, tell me what you want me to do today, first, second, third. Like, I just need three things today, tell me what you wanna do. And I would encourage you to do the same because one of those things might be really simple, like calling your family or or calling you know someone who might be in need, whatever. It might be something really small, but it will mean a lot to that person. So anyways, that that is what was on my heart. I um. Yeah, and I know the Lord was so in it because I am like really sweaty right now. And that happens every time the Holy Spirit like consumes me. So I just really want y'all to be encouraged. I'm encouraged now. Um, I wasn't encouraged a few days ago. Um, I'm just like everybody else, checking Facebook, checking the news, calling my family. You know, have there been any more school closures? You know, just all that stuff. But um, so it's okay to look. It's okay to get in there and, and pay attention and to know what's going on. But it's much more important that we take advantage of the situation that we're in and get closer to Jesus and try to help others get close to him as well. And so many times the greatest way to get people closer to him is by meeting practical needs or emotional needs or spiritual needs. So let's use advantage, you know, take advantage of social media. Let's take advantage of our phones, of, you know, email, things like that, ways of reaching out to people. Let's take advantage of that and keep posting on Facebook, like encouraging things or funny things or, um, you know, scripture or um, sermons or songs, just anything to try to put hope out into this world. Like let's speak life over this really dark situation. And what we post has a lot to do with what we're speaking out. So Oh, we may not have said it, but we're saying it if it's on our timeline. So, um, yeah, it's uh, everyone's on it right now because they're checking the news and stuff. So why not let them see scripture? Why not let them hear Christian songs? Why not let them hear things that are going to give them hope? So anyways, well, I love you guys. Thank you for joining me tonight. I have my grandsons, which I did not know I was going to have today. So I wanted to make this quick, but I want to pray for you all right now. And anyone who's going to be watching the replay and just be blessed. We uh, we have a, a big mission ahead of us. So this can be a really fun time if we make it. All right. Well, Lord Jesus, I just want to thank you so much for giving me that word yesterday, Lord. I thank you that, um, yeah, that you trust us, Lord. You trust us to do what we're called to do. You trust us with the information that we have. You trust us with the spirit that is in us, God. You trust that we are going to take our eyes off of ourselves. We're gonna put them back on you and back on the community, God. And Father, I just pray, Lord, that you would give us opportunities, Lord, and that we would take them, God. I pray, Lord, that we would use wisdom, but we would also use faith, God. I pray, Lord, that, um, that you would just remind us, Lord, that we 
are ready for this, Lord, that we have been trained for this, God. I thank you, Lord, that we have everything in us that pertains to life and godliness. We are literally lacking nothing. We have the great I am in us. We have the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead in us. So God, I pray that you would fill us, God. Every person who's watching, God, any person who's going to be watching the replay, God, I ask right now, Lord God, that you would fill them with your Holy Spirit now in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, for a fresh anointing, God. I pray, Lord Jesus, that they would get close to you, God. I pray, Lord, that they would surrender their lives to you now, God. Father, I pray, Lord, that you would use them mightily, God, that you would fill them with all your love and all your power, all your mercy, all of everything they could ever need, Lord, everything that pertains to life and godliness, Lord, I pray that they would be filled now in the name of Jesus. And I pray, God, that you would love people through them, God, that you would encourage people through them, that you would heal people through them, God. I do pray for miraculous signs, Lord, and wonders in this season, God. I know, Lord, if people were to see stuff like that, Lord, everybody would be flocking to you. And so, God, I just thank you for what we're going through. I thank you for this trial, even though, of course, none of us would really want to go through this trial, but I thank you for it anyways. I thank you for what it's going to do to our lives with you, God, and I thank you what for for what it's going to do for the lives of others. And so, Lord, we just praise you, God. We're going to con consider this joy. We're going to count it all joy, whether we feel like it or not, Lord. And so, God, I just thank you and pray blessings on your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Alrighty. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for joining me and share this. It's an encouragement, especially to believers, okay? We've been trained for this, so don't forget it. Don't shrink back. Nothing to fear. Bye.